What's new in Cisco APIC? New to first time setup is the addition of SNMP and Syslog, which behave in much the same way as the other wizards you're used to. The goal of which is to allow you to configure all of these features from one place. To reach this page, this button must be enabled. To do that, you must first meet this condition. At least one BGP route reflector is configured along with some of this basic first-time setup stuff. If you come here, this allows you to configure SNMP polling and trap destinations for your fabric. Here you have the ability to configure SNMP to allow leaf switches, spine switches, and apex to be polled via SNMP. Insert contact, location, community strings, As you'll notice, it says pending because it's not configured yet. This is a new concept in this wizard. The ability to see the status of what's configured and what's still pending. The posts for these tables are sent once you select save and continue. Here you can see that the table is not configured. If you select save and continue and come back to it, you can see that the status has changed to configure. For client group policies, we have another wizard that pops up. The client group policy is created once you've entered the proper information. All of this functionality mimics exactly how it appeared in APIC before this feature existed. The next part of SNMT is traps. If you come here, it allows you to create a trap destination just enter host name or IP, community, then select update and save and continue. This entire wizard configures the default SNMP policy so all of the community strings and users get created under the default policy. The default policy already exists when the system starts up. Hence, the decision was to reuse that policy with the initial configuration for first-time users. More advanced users can choose to create their own SNMP policies. This wizard will not affect any of the other SNMP policies, just the default policy. Syslog is essentially the same as the SNMP traps table. Just enter host, severity, forwarding facility, admin state, select update, and save and continue to go ahead and create that entry. And that's all there is to it. For SRMPLS, make sure you've selected the infra tab and are under networking and come down for SRMPLS infra L3 out. Right click, select Create SRMPLS Infra L3 Out to take you to the Create page. Give it a name. Select the L3 domain. And then select the border leaf in the pod, either pod 1 or pod 2. You can add the BFD multi-hop policy from here, either use an existing one or create a new one. Add the BGP EVPN remote IPv4 address. Configure the remote ASN, then select next. The transport data plane can have either MPLS or SRMPLS enabled. If SRMPLS is enabled, it won't send that segment routing disabled flag under the BGP peer IP. 
The interface types are set as sub interface for L3 and port for L2, so that's okay. We'll select one node from this dropdown, and we can specify any router ID here. The BGP EVPN loopback and the MPLS transport loopback are automatically populated. This is the segment ID index, which you'll advertise for SRMPLS. Now let's come to the interface and select an interface and add the VLAN. Uh, MTU is pre-populated. Let's add an IPv4 address for the interface. And here we have the BGP peer IP address. And the remote ASN for the BGP PRT. Select finish to configure the infra side of the SRMPLS. This is the information you get on the summary page. If we go to the policy page, you'll see the values we've selected, which can be changed here as well. If we dig down to the MPLS infra node profile, we can see our configuration. We missed adding the QoS policy, which we can add now. Either use the one provided or create a new one. As you can see, all the values are pre-populated. We can even add another policy or another BGP EVPN connectivity loopback. So it's still L3 out configuration, but with very selective knobs and selective policies. That's where the simplification comes in. For MPLS, we're only showing those policies required to configure MPLS and not those things that are used for regular L3 outs. You can drill down and see the BFD interface profile we created, the BFD multi-hop node profile we created, here's the BGP peer IP that we created. In the configured nodes, we can show the operational stats for SRMPLS. Select the T1 tab, come down under any tenant and networking and click SRMPLS VRF L3 out. Add the name, select the verb. There will be a list of MPLS Infra L3 outs that we created. Select one. Then we can give a name to the external EPG. Then we can configure the IP prefix subnet address. And as we did previously, we can add the intra VRF policy, route leaking and security, the import and export flags that we had under subnets. We can add the provided contract and the consumed contract. And the route maps that are configured under the tenant, you can either create a new route map or use the one already there. And the same goes for the inbound route maps.
Once we submit this, there's one more thing we have to do. Configure the BGP route targets for SRM PLS VRFs L3 outs if the BGP route targets aren't configured on the same VRF that we selected. We can go there and check that. It's VRF1, so we can go to VRF1, and we have to add that VRF from here. BGP route target, and after it's created, your configuration for SRMPLS for L3 out is done. If you want to attach more consumer labels to this particular VRF L3 out, we can come here and there is only one SRMPLS Infra L3 out created, but if there's more, you can attach more consumer labels, and they are mostly the same name as the SRMPLS L3 outs. So that's the name of the provider on the SRMPLS L3 out, which is the same as the consumer on the VRF L3 out. Another enhancement for this release is the ability to see all of the SRMPLS Infra L3 out stats. These stats are pulled every minute. Here you can see the VRFs, nodes, and how many packets are both transmitted and received every minute. We've also made controller installation more informative. Now you can see the install stage and an upgrade progress bar to let you know how far the install has advanced. When you schedule node upgrades, enter the required information and select Submit. The pre-validation API is being checked and a warning message will show before the group type if there are any faults. Once the download to the switch starts, you'll see the status in the download progress bar. If there's an issue, you'll see a message below the progress bar. Once the upgrade starts, you'll see that status in the upgrade progress bar. Another new feature is text-based banners. In the past, we've had URL-based banners, but with this release, banner creation is much more simple. For instance, you can add a GUI banner that states this instance is going to upgrade tomorrow at 2.50 p.m. And you can replace the old URL in the application banner with something like maintenance mode for this APIC. And mark it as critical. As soon as you submit that change, you can see the app banner here. And when I log out, you can see the GUI banner here. These are just some of the new features in release 501. These are just some of the new features in Cisco APIC.